Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. Back by popular demand, a new episode of Spicy Licks. For those of you that might be new to my channel, this is a little series that I do here where I'll take a lick that I have transcribed from another player or a lick that I've come up with myself that is more often than not being inspired by another player. I teach you that lick note for note using tab and notation. And then after that, I go into the theory behind that lick so that you can use that information to come up with similar licks of your own. So I've been listening to a lot of Johnny Highland recently. Johnny is a fantastic country guitar player and today's lick is inspired by some of his open string banjo roll runs. We'll come to what a banjo roll is further on in the video, but this lick in particular is in the key of G and to speed it sounds like this. <laughs> Here's that same lick, but a little slower this time. So let's go through each part of that lick together with the tab on screen. Here is the first part. You'll notice on the tab that above the notes, it says P, M, and R, and that stands for pick, middle finger, ring finger. So the technique that we're using to play most of this lick with is what I referred to earlier, a banjo roll. So that's just going pick, middle, ring, pick, middle, ring across three strings. So the first banjo roll that we have in this lick is on a G major triad and that starts down here at fret three on the low E string. So we pick fret three on the low E string, then we pluck the second fret on the A string with our middle finger, and then we pluck the open D string with our ring finger. So that's pick, middle, ring, pick, middle, ring. There's your first banjo roll. Quick side note, if you're new to the banjo roll technique, if you're new to using a combination of pick and fingers, then what I would recommend doing to begin with is just practicing those first three notes, just that G major trad by itself over and over again, just to get familiar with going Pick, middle, ring, pick, middle, ring. Next up, we have another banjo roll, this time starting on the A string. So we're gonna pick fret five on the A string. We're gonna pluck fret three on the D string with our middle finger. And we're gonna pluck the open G string with our ring finger. So pick, middle, ring, pick, middle, ring. So that's the first part of the lick. Then the second part of the lick goes like this. So we're getting into a sort of G blues scale flavor now with the addition of that flat five. So the first banjo roll that we have in this part of the lick is similar to what we just did on the A string, but now we're gonna start on the D string instead. So you're gonna pick fret five on the D string. You're going to pluck the third fret on the G string with your middle finger and you're going to pluck the open B string with your ring finger. Pick, middle, ring, pick, middle, ring. Then the second part of this part, the second half of this part of the lick goes like this. So we have sixth fret on the G string, which we pick. Then we have the third fret on the B string, which we pluck with our middle finger. And then third fret again, this time on the high E string, and we pluck that with our ring finger. So the second part of the lick again sounds like this. And together with the first part. And to finish this lick, you could really do any sort of G Mixolydian or G Blues scale run. But just as an example, here's what I played. So you're sliding down from six to five on the G and I'm plucking this with my middle finger, by the way. And then pulling off to three and then picking five on the D string and pulling off to three. And then pick five on the D string again to finish up. So 
here's the entire lick once again. And what's happening here theory-wise, um, specifically to do with the scales that I'm playing, is I'm thinking G mixolydian. Okay, so I recently uploaded a video about the relationship between the mixolydian mode and the major and minor pentatonic scales, because uh, what mixolydian is, is a scale that is very similar to what happens when you combine major pentatonic scales and minor pentatonic scales with the same root note. For example, in this solo, you could view it as me playing a combination of G major pentatonic and G minor pentatonic, which it technically would be with the addition of the G blues scale as well, which is basically just adding that flat five interval to uh, a G minor pentatonic. This solo starts with me arpeggiating a G major triad. So you might recognize that as just the three lowest notes in your basic open G chord. But then after that, I move on to a minor pentatonic and blues scale sort of tonality. So you can hear there that I am using a combination of major and minor sounds to create this one lick. So all of those notes that get played in this lick, they pretty much fit under the umbrella of the, the mixolydian sound. So again, when I'm thinking mixolydian, I like to think of it as a combination of major and minor pentatonic scales. And again, I have made a video about this specific topic. So if you've not seen that video, uh, go and check it out for a more in-depth explanation of what it is I'm talking about here with regards to the combination of major and minor pentatonic scales and how that relates to mixolydian. I'll put a link to that video in the description box below. Now, the reason that this lick sounds so cool is because of the combination of fretted notes and open string notes. At least that's why I think it sounds cool because when you combine fretted notes with open strings, you're basically combining two different sonic textures, if you will. So on the one hand, you have the short staccato notes that are fretted. They don't ring out into each other. And that's another thing I should have mentioned earlier, actually, when you're playing these banjo rolls, make sure that you fret the note. And then as soon as it's done, fret the next one. Don't leave it to ring out like that. All the notes should be separate. So on the one hand, you have these fretted notes, which are very staccato. And then you have the introduction of open strings. So we have the open D string down here, which is a different sonic texture because that string rings out and it's not, it's not like, it doesn't sound like this. It sounds like this. And that might be quite a subtle difference when you're just listening to it like that. But in the context of this lick, you can hear that adding in that open string really does make a difference to the overall sound. Because if I just go like this, it doesn't quite sound as cool. So just to really highlight the difference that using open strings makes to this lick, um, here's that same lick, but this time I'm gonna play it entirely fretted, okay? So no open strings, I'm just gonna fret every single note. Okay, and here it is again, the way it should be played. So when you're fretting all the notes there, you can't do that banjo roll technique. So it doesn't sound as twangy and you're also not getting the open strings. So that's, you know, a big part of why this lick sounds the way it does is because I'm using open strings, which allows me to use certain fingerings to play the different parts of this lick um, and using the, the banjo roll technique to do that. All right, guys, I think it's time to wrap up this episode of Spicy Licks. I really hope you enjoyed it. And let me know if you'd like to see more country inspired videos on my channel in the near future. And if you do, please leave a comment below if you have any you know, particular 
uh, favourite country guitar players uh, of your own that you'd like me to check out and maybe do lessons on in the future. I'd be really interested to hear your suggestions. If you did enjoy this video, please do give it a thumbs up below and click subscribe for more.